Welcome to the Avatar series right here at Comic Storian, where we bring you audio dramas of your favorite comic books. I'm your narrator, Dan, and today we're going to be starting the Avatar story, The Search, in which Zuko finally starts searching for what happened to his mother. It was decades in the past, the town of Hira. Ikim stands on the stage practicing his lines for the upcoming play about the Dragon Emperor. He is startled as Ursa jumps around the corner, surprising him and forcing him to stumble to the ground. She laughs as he yells at her for scaring him, calling him her cowardly boyfriend. She tells Ikim that she has gotten the role of the Dragon Empress in the play. Ikim congratulates her, offering to practice their kiss together. They practice their lines, kissing together in their dragon masks. As Ursa pulls away, Ikum stares at her before finally asking her the question. Will you marry me? He asks. She stares at him, confused, checking her script for the line, but he pulls off his mask, repeating the question, and she smiles up at him and accepts his proposal. They hold each other, kissing. In the present day, in the city of Yu Dao, Aang and his friends sit around the conference table with the other leaders and officials, listening to the teachings of an old man. Well, listening is a strong word, as all they hear is blah blah blah. Sokka leans over to Aang, asking how listening to a boring lecture is supposed to help them figure out what to do with Yu Dao. Aang agrees, telling Sokka that the Earth King believes that hearing about the Earth Kingdom's past will help them figure out the future. But he disagrees. We need a new way of seeing the Four Nations, Aang begins, but is interrupted by a furious Katara who shushes the both of them. Surprise, surprise, my boring sister likes the boring lecture guy, Sokka shrugs. Aang looks at him. Hey! That's my girlfriend you're talking about, he hisses. Zuko sits next to them, not paying any more attention to his friends than he is the teacher. But the word family snaps him back to the present, forcing him to raise his hand. Professor, can you repeat that last part, he asks. The teacher sighs, realizing that all teenagers are alike. He repeats himself, telling the room once again that the Earth Kingdom believes that family is in essence a small family, and the nation a large family. In treating his own family with dignity, a ruler learns to govern his nation with dignity, the teacher explains. Zuko sits for a moment as the professor returns to his lecture, and Aang leans over, asking if his friend is okay. I put my father in prison, and my sister in an institution. My mother was banished for years, what does that mean for my nation? He asks the Avatar. Aang tries to comfort him and Sokka explains that only boring people would listen to the boring professor. Katara smacks him in the face with snow water bended from her cup. In the village of Hira, Ursa runs home, eager to tell her family about her marriage proposal. But she comes in to discover her mother is crying on the floor. What's wrong? Where's dad? She asks. Her mother wipes away a tear, telling her that her father is in the back with a visitor. Entering the greenhouse, Ursa's father tells her to show respect to their guest, the Fire Lord Azulon. Ursa bows before their ruler, but the Fire Lord tells her to rise. We've had such trouble finding Avatar Roku's descendants. It's as if he wanted to keep you hidden from us, the Fire Lord smiles. But he tells her that the search was worth it, that the pairing of the Avatar's granddaughter with his son will yield a bloodline of great power. One that will help ensure my family's rule for centuries after I'm gone, he tells them. Gesturing over his shoulder, he introduces the other man in the room. Ursa, may I introduce you to Fire Prince Ozai, my second son. He has a proposal for you, the Fire Lord says. In the present, Zuko is once again in the Fire Nation, flanked by his two guards, Suki and Tai Li. He briefly tells them about the lectures in the Earth Kingdom before glancing into the prison rooms. Have they said anything to each other? He asks, glancing at his straight-jacketed sister and his imprisoned father. Not a word, Suki reports. Zuko orders them to open the door and enters with a tray of tea. 
The guards are shocked that he would do something like this. They are still my family, Zuko tells them. And he offers his sister the tray, but she lunges out with her teeth, biting the tray and throwing it to the floor, tripping Zuko. Inside his cell, Ozai smiles. How did you expect me to drink tea in a straitjacket, Zuzu? Did you want me to lap it up like some kind of animal? Azula shouts, standing over her brother. Tai Lee rushes in, attacking Azula with her chi blocking techniques. From the floor, Azula snarls at Tai Lee, rambling incoherently. Zuko orders his guards to leave. He picks his sister up, telling her that the tea was in the hope that it would give her and their father some dignity. Azula looks over her shoulder at her brother, telling him that if he wants to give them dignity, that they should be able to speak in private. Fine, Zuko agrees after pondering for a moment. He walks outside of the cell, telling the guards to give them half an hour. Tai Li disagrees with the idea, but Zuko is firm. Like it or not, Azula is my best chance of finding my mother, he tells her. In the past, the Fire Lord's carriage is being pulled out of the city, but they are stopped as Ikem shouts from the road, blocking their path. Fire Lord Azulon, you have my... my true love in your carriage. With all due respect, I can't let you take her from me. He shouts, his words stuttering. The guards begin to laugh, realizing that Ikem's swords are actually just stage props. Take care of him, Azulon orders. And the guards move in, but Ikem leaps among them, smacking them in the face with the wooden weapons. Ikem dodges as fire is launched at him, but he can't last for long. In the carriage, Ursa begs Ozai to call off the guards. I'll get him to leave, but you have to promise not to hurt him. Please, my love, she begs. Ozine leans out the door, ordering the soldiers to stand down. Stepping from the carriage, Ursa rushes forward, telling Ikem that he has to leave. The decision's been made. Nothing can change it, she tells him. Tell me that marrying the prince is what you truly want. Tell me and I'll go home, Ikem whispers to her. She looks back at the Fire Lord and the Fire Prince before turning back to Ikem, tears in her eyes. Fire Prince Ozai honored my family by asking for my hand in marriage, and I joyfully accepted. Now for your sake and mine, go home, she tells him. The carriage moves forward, leaving Ikem crying in the dust. Later, they begin to wheel Azula back to her quarters, but Zuko tells Suki and Tai Li to get some rest. Zuko, I'd feel better if we accompanied you the rest of the way, Suki tells him. But Zuko shakes his head, telling her that he can escort his sister on his own. Be careful! The chi blocking is going to wear off soon, Tai Li tells him. Pushing his sister forward, Zuko lets Azula know that he won't be returning her to the institution, that he has prepared her old room in the palace. Have you ever been chi blocked, Zuzu? Azula asks him. Funny thing, all your joints go soft like they're melted wax. Then for just a few moments, as your strength returns, you find yourself more flexible than you ever thought possible. She tells him, slipping her hand free as it crackles with lightning. She launches a blast at Zuko, forcing him backwards. Stop! He yells, launching a fireball at her as she begins to bounce away. But Azula flips, allowing the fire to burn through her straitjacket and free her. Now free, she launches herself through one of the palace walls and continues to flee. In the past, Ikem wanders away from Hira. Sadness fills him, and he begins to build a life for himself outside the village. He builds shelter, teaching himself to survive off the land. One night, he stares into his fire. Turning his head, he looks across the river, seeing a large wolf spirit drinking from the water. Zuko rushes inside, finding a wounded soldier who points him in the direction of his sister. Racing through the palace, Zuko finds Azula's old room, and he feels the heat coming off a Fire Nation banner and burns it, revealing a secret passage. Following the passage down, he finds Azula in a secret chamber, rummaging through an old trunk. They're here, just like Father said. He overcame her control long enough to give me the truth, she shouts. 
Zuko is shocked by the secret chamber, but he doesn't have time for that. He orders Azula to give him the letters that she is holding as she reveals that they were written by their mother. There are many years of letters that she wrote, and they're the key to finding her. Come, have a look! She taunts as she burns them in her hand, secretly hiding one of the letters behind her back. Zuko yells at his sister as she continues to taunt him, but she suddenly holds her head in her hands. Look, believe it or not, dear brother, I want to find her as much as you do. So I'll tell you what was in those letters under one condition, she tells him. Decades in the past, at the wedding of Ozai and Ursa, the young woman looks around at the celebration. Ozai leans in, telling her that she has lovely parents. Thank you. They've always been good to me, she tells him. He smiles at her, telling her that she should let them know that for her last words to them. So their memory of you will always be sweet. He smiles madly. She doesn't understand, and Ozai explains that as the princess of the Fire Nation, her old life no longer exists. After this day, do not mention Hira, your family, or your old life ever again. You belong to the royal family now, and to me. He whispers to her, leaning in and kissing her on the cheek. In the present day, Appa descends towards the Fire Nation palace, with Aang, Katara, and Sokka jumping off to greet Iroh as he comes out to them. Iroh yells for his nephew, letting him know that his friends are here. As Zuko comes out, Aang bows to the Fire Lord, telling him that it has been too long since they've seen each other. It's only been a week, Zuko points out. When the friends ask Zuko why he contacted them, he lets them know that he learned of the village his mother was born in. I'm going to look for her. Uncle Iroh's agreed to watch over things here while I'm gone, he tells them. May you find who and what you are searching for, nephew, Iroh tells Zuko, bowing solemnly. That's great, Zuko, but it sounds like you've got everything covered, Aang begins. Why do you need us? Katara finishes for her sweetie. Zuko nods, telling them that the information came at a cost. Aang and Katara are shocked as Azula reveals herself behind Zuko. The friends leap into action, prepare to defend themselves and Zuko. But Suki and Tai Lee come out, telling them to stand down. Azula was the one who got the information from Ozai. Because she helped me out, we made a deal. She's going to come with me to look for our mother, and she is going to travel unbound with dignity. And I want you all to come with us, Zuko tells his friends. No offense, but that sounds like the worst plan ever, Aang tells him. But Iroh finally steps forward. Ever since my nephew ascended the throne, he has yearned for peace. Finding Ursa may bring that peace, and not just for himself, Iroh tells Aang, glancing over at Azula. And the Avatar smiles, finally stepping up to Zuko. We're your friends, Zuko. If you need us, we'll go with you, he tells him. The next day, Aang lands Appa in the courtyard, greeting Azula. Hmm, better be careful when you put my luggage on that shaggy beast of yours. She snaps, throwing her bag on the ground. Appa growls at her, with Aang petting him. I know, buddy. It'll only be for a little while, he tells the Sky Bison as he calms him. Over to the side, Zuko comments to Katara that they'll have to keep watch on his sister, with Sokka offering to take the first. I appreciate the offer, Sokka, but maybe we should leave it to one of the benders, Zuko tells his friend. But Sokka is eager to prove himself, pulling out his boomerang and ordering Azula to board the Sky Bison. She shocks the metal in his hand quickly, but Katara is there, freezing her hand so she can't bend. Katara runs over, yelling at Azula to never touch her brother. Tell your brother to not wave his stupid toys in my face, she hisses. Zuko steps up to his sister, reminding her that they had a deal and that she has to remain calm. Keep your merry band of misfits in check and we'll get along just fine, she smiles at him. I changed my mind. One of you guys take the first watch, Sokka tells them sheepishly. As the Sky Bison flies away, Iroh and the others wave goodbye. 
He looks around at the palace, surprised that he ever wanted to live in such a dreary place. He smiles, pulling the weapon from a soldier's hand and handing him a cup of tea instead. That's it! He shouts with a smile. I have discovered my first order of business as interim fire lord. I will declare a National Tea Appreciation Day. As Appa flies through the open skies, the group discuss how this adventure is just like the old times. But Aang looks at their new companion. Well, instead of Toph, now we have... He begins, motioning towards Azula, who stares them all with madness in her eyes. So tell me, kids, I've been dying to know. Which of you miscreants did she approach first? She questions, insanity in her voice. Katara stands up, questioning what Azula is even talking about. None of you had even met me yet. How did she convince you to ruin my life? She demands, standing up to meet Katara. But Zuko is there, telling her to calm down, his hand sizzling from the heat. Put that away, Zuko. It's just small talk, she tells him, calmness once more in her voice. I miss Toph. Sokka sighs, leaning away from the madness. You said it, Aang agrees. Time passes, and Zuko looks out on the horizon, seeing Hira in the distance. He comments that he hopes they can get there before sunset, not wishing to enter the village in the night like bandits. Sokka agrees, turning to ask Aang his opinion, before noticing that the Avatar has an angry look on his face, glaring at the world. What? Is it not enough to have one crazy passenger with crazy eyes? Sokka demands, startled. The rest begin to question Aang, but he doesn't understand either. I can't help it. There's something out there, some kind of spirit. I can feel its presence, especially in my face, he tells them. Sokka begins to joke around, but Aang looks over the side, seeing a massive wolf running through the foothills. Did you guys see that giant wolf spirit? I think that's the presence I'm feeling, he tells them. But Zuko glances over the side, seeing nothing. But when he turns back, he sees his sister standing on the edge of Appa's saddle. Azula, get down from there, he shouts at her. She holds out her arms, looking over her shoulder at the others. I can't tell you what a pleasure it's been riding with you all, listening to you bicker. Too bad not all siblings get along as well as Zuzu and me. Now that Hira is a hop, skip, and a jump away, it's time to bid you farewell, she tells them, leaping off the side as Zuko yells after her. Aang leaps over as well, catching the air with his glider. He catches the princess, but she turns, burning a hole through the wing of his glider, and continues to plummet towards the earth. Azula lands, pausing only briefly before she starts to run away. Behind her, Aang crashes into the earth, his glider broken. Appa lands nearby, with Zuko leaping off one side while Katara and Sokka go for Aang. You guys go make sure Aang is okay, I'll go after Azula, he shouts to his friends. Azula doesn't slow, leaping over a stream, but a voice brings her up short, and she turns back, looking at the reflection in the water. You're only hurting yourself, my daughter, Ursa says from the shimmering water. Don't pretend you care about me, Azula hisses at the image of her mother. You thought you could break me, didn't you, by having Zuko lock me up in that institution? But I'm stronger than you realize. I used all my time alone to figure out the truth. You've been conspiring to take me down from the day I was born. Even when I was an infant, you saw something in me you never had. Power! That's why you think I'm a monster. My power makes you fear me. She screams at the river, but Ursa tries to tell her daughter that she is confused. But Azula turns away. She still hasn't figured everything out, but she will. I can't become Fire Lord with you constantly conspiring to undo me. That's why I'm going to find you, mother, and end you, she vows. Ursa tries to tell her daughter that she loves her. But Azula turns, hitting the water with a bolt of energy. Water rains down from the displaced stream, and Zuko finally catches up with his sister. Who are you talking to? he asks. She drops into a combat stance, but Zuko pleads with her to keep to the deal. 
that they will find their mother together. But Azula laughs, telling Zuko that she doesn't really need him, and he drops into a combat stance with fire burning in his hand. Please, I don't want to do this, he tells her. But suddenly, the stream water shifts and flows out of the river, hitting and freezing Azula. She falls to the ground, wrapped in ice. I really don't appreciate you trying to set my boyfriend on fire, Katara fumes as she stalks forward. Zuko begins to ask Aang if he's okay from his fall, but the Avatar has the crazy look on his face again. I feel the presence again, Aang hisses. Azula begins to rant at Katara, but her words suddenly stop as she gasps in shock. Behind Sokka stands the massive wolf spirit. Back in the past, Ursa finishes writing a letter, hiding it in the folds of her robe. She is interrupted by a young Zuko, though, who tells his mother that he is too scared to sleep as he rubs his eyes. She picks him up, carrying him back to his room as he tells her about the dream, that he was surrounded by fire and Azula was laughing at him. They pass his sister's room, with Ursa pointing out how she wouldn't hurt him. She leaves the boy in his bed, telling him to hold on tightly to the good dreams, telling him that it was just a nightmare and to hold on tightly to the good dreams. With this done, she moves through the palace, and she knocks on a servant's door, greeting the old woman as she answers. She hands her the letter, asking her once more to deliver it to Hira in confidence. Of course, just like all the others, the old woman nods. As the princess leaves, the old woman waits until she can't hear her in the hall anymore. Finally, she turns to put the letters with all the other undelivered ones, but first, she reads it. Shock pulls at her face as she stares at the words. She quickly finds Ozai training, bowing and asking for forgiveness from the Fire Prince. She holds up the letter, asking him to read it. I told you to file those away, he snaps, wiping the sweat from his body. Here. Ursa reveals a secret that requires my prince's immediate attention, she tells him. Ozai takes the letter and the woman quickly leaves the chamber. Scanning the words, anger begins to fill Ozai's eyes. Impossible! Back in the present, the spirit wolf is snapping at the heroes, with Aang asking everybody to be respectful of the creature. Respectful? It just tried to eat my head! Sokka yells. Zuko looks at the marking on the creature's chest, noting how they look like the face that Aang had been making. The Avatar leaps into the air, trying to plead with the Great Spirit. He offers the creature peace, motioning to the captured Azula. My friends and I were traveling to the village of Hira when one of us decided to go their own way. If we've disturbed you, please accept our apologies, he shouts at the creature. The spirit pauses for a moment, before lunging at Aang, trying to attack him. Your respectful tactic doesn't seem to be working, Zuko points out. The friends gather, Sokka throws his boomerang, while Katara launches ice knives, and Zuko launches a fireball. But the attacks have no effect, and the wolf just eats the fire. Did that wolf spirit just eat my fire? Zuko asks, stunned. And burped, Sokka yells in fear. It ate your fire and burped! Aang tries to reason with the spirit again, but the creature lunges once more. But this time, Appa intervenes, slamming into the wolf as Aang tries to tell him to go easy on it. The two creatures trade blows, with Appa finally slamming the wolf away with his tail. Woohoo! Sokka yells, Sky Bison 1? Fire-eating wolf zero, Sokka cheers. The wolf struggles to its feet, strange noises coming from his mouth and stomach. Appa, I asked you to go easy on him. Are you okay, big giant wolf spirit? Aang yells. But the creature suddenly leans forward, vomiting up a swarm of moth wasps that fly towards the group. You are the grossest spirit ever, Sokka yells as the cloud of bugs swarm them. As the moth wasps attack, Azula rolls over, yelling at her brother. Free me, Zuzu! I'll take care of those spirits for you, she shouts. But Zuko looks at her, telling her that they don't need her help. Oh right, cause you and your friends have everything under control! 
She huffs, looking over at everyone being attacked. Finally, Zuko makes up his mind and blasts the ice wrap with a fireball. Azula gets to her feet, electricity crackling in her hands. She creates a ball of light, gathering the moth wasps to her. Throwing the ball of light away, the spirits follow after. Seeing them leave, the wolf quickly follows after them. You're welcome, Azula says, turning back to the group with a smile. That night, the group is resting peacefully, while Sokka and Zuko sit around the campfire, Azula muttering in her sleep, still arguing with her mother. After everything that's happened, you're still going to let her sleep with her hands unbound? Sokka asks. She saved us from the moths, didn't she? I'm giving her a chance, Zuko tells him. But Sokka doesn't agree, thinking they are giving her too many chances. Why are you still up? Zuko finally asks. Sokka smiles sheepishly. I drank a ton of water trying to get the taste of moth wasps out of my mouth. Now my bladders, he tells him. But Zuko holds up his hand, cutting him off. I got the picture, thanks, he tells his friend. Sokka glances over his shoulder, seeing his sister curled up from the cold. He stands and walks over to her, draping his blanket over her sleeping form, bringing a slumbering smile to her face. After all those snowballs you took to the head, you still look out for her? Zuko comments. I throw witticisms at her, she throws snowballs at me. The relationship works, Sokka answers with a shrug and a smile. Seems like you're getting the short end of the deal, Zuko notes. But Sokka shakes his head, telling him that when it comes to his sister, it doesn't matter if he gets the short end. And Zuko glances back at his own shivering sister, asking if Sokka has another blanket for him. Zuko walks across the clearing, draping the blanket over Azula's sleeping form. He begins to stand, but notices a letter tucked in his sister's boot. He pulls it free, reading his mother's words. My dearest Ikem, it's taken me a long time to admit it, but you were right. I belong with you, and nothing is worth this pain. My one consolation is our son, Zuko. When I look into his eyes, it's as if I'm looking into yours. My thoughts are with you always. Love, Ursa. Zuko's eyes read over the words again, shock displayed on his face. Our son. And that concludes part one of The Search. Thank you guys so much for listening today. And if you enjoyed this, please be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, click that bell icon to make sure you get those notifications, and leave a comment down below. If you want to find more of me, I am Dante Producer on Twitter and Instagram, and Silo91 on Twitch. That's C-Y-L-O-O-9-1. If you want to support Comic Storian even more, be sure to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash comic storian where for two dollars you get access to early access content and many of our podcasts thank you guys so much and i will see you next time for the search part two